If you're a dividend investor, then you probably already know this feeling, but I've got this need, this burning desire inside of me to buy a new dividend stock. Right now I have 22 different holdings in my portfolio, and if you saw this recent video of mine, then you'll know there are a few I'm planning on selling out of. What can I say? I'm getting to the point where I might be ready to buy another one, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. I'm gonna tell you about the three stocks currently sitting on my watch list, and I'll also share some thoughts on the current state of my portfolio and where I see things going from here. Before we get to that, though, so in case you're new to the channel, my name is Ryan and here we strictly talk about dividend stocks and how you can invest in them to create passive income and reach financial freedom. So if you love dividend stocks and if you're on a mission to retire early, then hit that subscribe button. I'd love to stay in touch as we both continue to grow our portfolios and collect that cash flow. Also guys, leave me a comment below and let me know what was the most recent stock you added to your portfolio. I'd be curious to hear what you think is looking good out there in the world of dividend investing. Anyway, as it pertains to my current setup, if we look at my dividend portfolio track, tracking spreadsheet, which you can start using for free. There is a link to download this in the description of the video. But right now, in the midst of this insane boom we're seeing in the market, my portfolio is sitting at an all-time high value of just under $56,000. Looking at my overall dividend stats, I feel that these are pretty well balanced with a respectable mid-4% yield and a weighted five-year dividend growth rate of near 7%, which I think gives me the best of both worlds in the dividend department. Having said that, if we look at how my holdings are broken down by yield and growth rate, I think this tells somewhat of a different story, and these numbers suggest that I'm a bit too heavily skewed towards high-yield stocks, with over 50% of my holdings having yields over 4%, and only 20% of my holdings having dividend growth rates above 8%, so there's a bit of a shortage there. Now, while the overall yield and growth rates show a solid balance between the two, I still feel like there's room to increase things on the growth side while still maintaining a respectable yield above 4%. And when it comes to adding any new stocks to my portfolio, this is something I'm trying to be mindful of, because in my perfect portfolio setup, I'd love to be at a place where I still have that 4% yield, but maybe that dividend growth rate is looking more like 8%-ish. That's really what I'm aiming for. And to accomplish that, I'll have to place more emphasis on dividend growth stocks, which means no more high yielders. I definitely have plenty of those. And as we go through these three stocks on my watch list, I think you'll notice that they fit that classic dividend growth makeup with yields that are on the lower end and dividend growth caggers that are a bit more abundant, like this first stock here, which is going to be Dolby Laboratories, sticker symbol DLB. Many of you probably probably recognize the company logo, but in case you're not familiar with what Dolby actually does, in a nutshell, they create technologies to improve the quality of audio and video experiences. Their popular Dolby surround sound is widely used in movie theaters and also in many home entertainment systems to create a more immersive, realistic, and enjoyable experience, whether you're watching a movie, listening to music, or playing video games. But that's really just the tip of the iceberg. The biggest revenue driver for Dolby is the licensing of their video and audio technology to other companies like Sony, Microsoft, Samsung, and Vizio who implement it into their products such as phones, computers, TVs, and gaming systems. Now what's cool about this is that this licensing is a really high margin business for Dolby. They pretty much just get paid to let other people use their technology. And all in all, that leaves them with a consistently high gross profit margin that historically has hovered at around 90%, which is very impressive. Furthermore, on a net basis, Dolby has negative debt on the balance sheet, which is another huge plus in my book. And that's not at all to say that debt is bad. It can certainly be used to the benefit of the business, but at least with negative net debt, the company going belly up into bankruptcy is just one less thing you have to worry about. Anyway, switching gears and looking at the dividend stats, like I said, this is a classic dividend growth makeup. We've got that lowish yield coming in at about one and a half percent with a payout ratio that is equally as low, sitting at 31% with plenty of room to increase the dividend and increase those payouts, which they've certainly done. The five-year growth rate is nice and high there in the double digits coming in at 11%, and they've been growing this dividend for the last eight straight years. Now, I still have a lot of research to do into this company. I am nowhere near being ready to pull the trigger on it, but I am intrigued and I do think it has some good qualities as do the other two we're about to get into. So we'll see what happens. And with that, moving on to the second company sitting on my watch list. This one is Paychex, sticker symbol P-A-Y-X, which is an HR and payroll company whose mission is to redefine HR in a digital world, which may not sound like real riveting stuff. And admittedly, human resources is a pretty boring and uninteresting business. But as long as there are companies and as long as those companies have to manage their employees, this is a necessary service, and Paychex aims to simplify and streamline the HR process as much as possible through their cloud-based software and corresponding app. Now, like with Dolby, I still have a lot of research to do into Paychex, so I'm still not super well-versed in it yet, but one thing I have been thinking about so far is the level of competition risk this business might face. Paychex is competing with ADP, which I believe is the most widely used HR company out there, as well as Intuit, who offers payroll and HR services through QuickBooks, and those 
aren't the only two competitors either. There are other companies like Bamboo, Paycom, and Gusto who have entered the market with their own cloud-based softwares. Having said that, Paychex appears to be managing this well and still continues to see pretty aggressive growth in sales and all the way down. And actually, as time goes on, it looks like this company is getting even more profitable. Plus, like with Dolby, Paychex is carrying negative net debt on the balance sheet, so that's really encouraging to see. And then taking a look at the dividend stats, this looks a little bit different than what we were getting with Dolby. I mean, first and foremost, the yield is a lot higher, coming in just above 3%, but along with that, the payout ratio is also considerably higher at 76.5%. Looking at the five-year growth rate, this is sitting just below 10%, so that's not too bad, and the dividend growth history is pretty nice as well at nine years. Having said that, looking at these metrics, the payout ratio at that level does raise some red flags, but this appears to be normal for the company, and in fact, the payout ratio has actually been declining over time, so hopefully it continues to trend in that direction. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on that. Anyway, moving on to the third stock that's sitting on my watch list. This one is one I've talked about before. It's Rollins Inc., ticker symbol ROL, which is one of the world's largest pest control companies. And they service customers in over 70 countries around the world through various subsidiaries of theirs, such as Orkin, Critter Control, and Clark Pest Control, which I remember as a kid growing up in small town, Yuba City, California, Clark Pest Control were the guys. Growing up, we lived on the outskirts of town, kind of out in the country a little bit. So we often had ants and spiders and other critters like that. So I remember Clark Pest Control having to come out and spray for that stuff quite often. But anyway, back to Rollins. This is another company that's seeing very consistent and aggressive growth from sales at the top all the way down to their free cash flow. Looking at their growth metrics over the last 10 years, revenue has grown by an average rate of about 8.5%, which is really nice. Net income and earnings per share have both grown by over 13%, and free cash flow is not too far behind that, with a 12.7% growth rate in the 10-year period. All very impressive. And looking at the dividend stats here, this is gonna be the highest growth dividend stock of the day. The yield is kind of like what we saw with Dolby, about 1.5%, and the payout ratio is kind of on the higher end, about 60.5%. But look at that five-year growth rate, 16 and three quarters of a percent, very impressive. And they've been growing this dividend for the last three years, which may not sound like an extensive dividend growth history. But then again, they have a really strong track record of keeping this dividend intact. They've been paying it for 34 straight years. So I do like to see that. Now, out of the three companies we've talked about today, Rollins is the one that I'm most certain about wanting to add to the portfolio. Like I said earlier, I still have a lot of research to do into those first two companies, but I've spent a lot of time with Rollins and I'm pretty convinced that I wanna add this stock to my portfolio portfolio, but my only holdup right now is the current valuation. Looking at a couple numbers here, Alpha Spread gives Rollins a base case intrinsic value of $20.80, which is quite a bit below the current share price. And Morningstars is also below the current share price, but it's a bit higher than what Alpha Spread's showing us at $32.50, which if we combine these two gives us an average intrinsic value of $26.65, which at a current share price of about 39 bucks would make Rollins 48% overvalued. And this is the one thing that's keeping me from adding Rollins to my portfolio right now. But having said that, I need to ask myself if this is a company that I feel good about owning for the next 10, 20, 30 years, and I think that the business will look better then than it does today, then does the current share price of, you know, $39 really even matter? Part of me thinks it does, and for the sake of wanting to establish the best position possible with the highest margin of safety, I'm inclined to hold off on buying Rollins until I see a more attractive valuation. But on the other hand, what if that doesn't come? What if Rollins just continues to climb from here and then I'll have missed my opportunity to invest in it at $39 per share, which in the grand scheme of things actually would have turned out to be a pretty good price to buy it at. This is definitely one of the hard parts about investing, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter and hear what you think. So let me know in the comments below. At any rate, I'm pretty certain that at some point I will be adding Rollins to my portfolio and I think selling out of the four stocks that I'm telling you about in this next video right over here will certainly pave the way to do so. I look forward to consolidating out of a few positions and here here I'm telling you exactly what my plans are and why I'm choosing to sell out of these four stocks. So click right over here to check that out and I'll see you in the next one.